Hi, I'm Kim Kohler from KimberlyKohler.com. So, a few weeks ago, I did a little video about the seven basic principles of jewelry design, and I gave you an overview of all seven, and today I have a jewelry tutorial for you that is based on one of those principles, and that principle is emphasis. So if you saw that video, the seven basic principles of jewelry design, then you'll probably remember that emphasis is the focal attention of the jewelry piece, kind of the first thing that catches the viewer's eyes. There are different ways you can bring emphasis to a jewelry piece. You could use a different color than the rest of the piece, a different size than the rest of the piece, a different texture from the rest of the piece, or a different shape from the rest of the piece. And today I'm actually going to be using a, a piece for emphasis, an element for emphasis that is all four of those things. Each jewelry piece you create will actually have an emphasis but it's just good to think about intentionally what is the emphasis. Make sure that the emphasis is where you want it to be. So today I am going to be showing you a simple jewelry design and it's going to be wire wrapped bead links that are interlocking and just with a very simple focal piece. So let's get started with the tutorial. These are the materials you'll need for this project. You'll need wire, 20 gauge half hard round wire works best. I'm using brass wire and I'm actually using 22 gauge because I don't have 20 gauge in this brass wire that I want to use. So you can kind of use what you have around and you just want to make sure the wire will go through the beads that you're going to use, which brings me to beads. You can use any beads for this tutorial. I am using these gemstone chip beads because they're pretty. And usually when I make wire wrapped bead links, you might just use one bead. I'm going to stack a few together for this necklace. You are going to want a focal bead or object of some sort for your emphasis. So. I have this wood piece, it has a hole drilled in it that my father cut for me. I love trees and woods and nature so I think this will make a really cute necklace with these beads and this kind of as a pendant coming down. You could use any kind of charm that you might want to use or you could use a large focal bead however you would like to do that. You'll need a clasp. I'm using a lobster clasp. You'll need a few jump rings. I'm, you want it to match your wire probably, so I'm using all brass for this project. And then you're going to need wire cutters, round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and then bent nose pliers are really helpful for opening and closing jump rings or just another pair of flat pliers. Um, you really can't use round nose pliers to open and close jump rings and you need two pair of pliers. So whatever you have around. So I just have my beads in this tray so they don't roll around. And so I am grabbing my wire and we're just going to cut a few inches of wire. So you want your wire to be about three inches longer than the bead that you are using. And then you're going to grab your round nose pliers, hold the wire between your pliers, and then we're going to wrap toward you and around. And I'm just kind of pulling that straight. You don't necessarily have to do that. Don't work with the wire too much because it will get hard before you want it to. And so you formed a loop. And then you take your chain nose pliers and hold that loop in your chain nose pliers. Okay, so now we want to straighten out this loop because the loop is off to the side and you want it more right on top of your wire, this long wire that's holding down, um, coming down. So how I do it is I wrap around once and while I'm doing that, I pull out the long wire straight. So now you see the loop is centered above the wire. 
and then I just change hands and then you're going to go around two more times um, this is where your front nose pliers could come in handy or you could just use your hands just go around two more times just keep those wraps close together and then we're going to trim off the excess wire making a flush cut so um, that's the back of your wire cutters toward what you're leaving behind. Don't do what I just did. I dropped everything and so the little piece of wire I was cutting off flew. Um, if you just keep your hand over it, it won't fly. And then you just grab your chain nose pliers and kind of go around just to make sure that end is not poking out. And you're just trying to like basically push the wire in toward the you know the wraps that you made but keeping it going in the direction that you were already going so you were already going around so we're just kind of taking the wire and going around and now you add your bead or in my case I'm going to add several of these chips and I'm going to keep it uniform throughout but right now I'm not sure how many five or six probably here let's see how that looks Try one more. Okay, so I'm using six of the chips. And now I'm going to hold the wire just above my last bead, about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to wrap down and around toward me, forming a loop. It's just like what we did on the other side. Grab my chain nose pliers holding the loop in my chain nose pliers. Go around once, pull the beads out straight, and then we're gonna do two additional wraps. Get in here and trim off the excess wire, and I did it again. Don't let your wire fly then you just have to find it and you might step on it if you don't find it. Okay, so that is the first wire wrapped bead link. Since this is going to be interlocking, what you could do is just make a bunch of these bead links and attach them all together with jump rings, but instead I'm doing them so they're interlocking. So the next link is a little different and then you follow this different pattern for the rest. Starts out the same cutting off a few inches of wire and making a wire wrap loop at one end just like I showed you and straighten out the loop and then wrap around two more times trim off the excess wire And make sure that end is not poking out. And what I just did, if your loops or your wraps get a little far apart, you can just take your pliers and push them together like that. And adding my bead chips, my gemstone chips. Again, about a quarter of an inch above your last bead, hold your wire in the round nose pliers, and we're going to wrap around, forming a loop. Here's where the change is. Before you close up that loop, you're going to slide this loop from the other wire wrapped bead link you created. It's securely in there now. And now you're going to finish this one the same way you did before, and you're basically just going to let this uh, wire wrap bead link hang off the side while you go around once, straighten out the loop, and then wrap around two more times. So you're just finishing it exactly the same, you just slid in that, that wire wrapped bead link loop before you finished and then you just kind of let it dangle off to the side almost like it's not even there 
and you have your your interlocking wire wrap bead links. So I'm just going to continue this until I have my necklace made and then we will continue from there. Okay, so I've made actually two strands of the wire wrapped bead links and that's because on one end it's we're going to add the clasp and on the other end we're going to attach our emphasis piece. So to do this I'm just going to use two jump rings so, move this so you can see it two jump rings so this hangs properly. So I've already opened up some jump rings. If you need help opening jump rings, I have a video just about that. And so I'm placing one strand in the jump ring and then the wood pendant. And now we're going to close the jump ring. I like to go back and forth a few times to harden up the jump ring. Also make sure we get it right in the right spot. And then I'm going to grab another jump ring that I've pre-opened and add the other strand. Okay. So now we have that. I just want to make sure it's hanging properly and I didn't think I got that jump ring closed properly and I didn't. So let's draw that again. Actually, okay, so here, let's do a little troubleshooting of jump rings. I have totally messed up the shape of this jump ring. It's all messed up. It's not going to be a circle again. Usually when that happens, there's really no point in trying to fix it. So, I'm just getting a new jump ring. And adding this other strands. And these jump rings are a little bit weird. So again, I'm just checking to make sure it's hanging right, make sure we got our jump rings right. And then on this end, I am adding my lobster clasp. Again with a jump ring. And then on the other side, I'm going to add two jump rings. So since I messed up one, I have to open up another one. Close that. I like to add just a couple jump rings. I just prefer that on the other end of a class, but it's just a little bit easier when there's a couple jump rings to make sure you catch the jump ring in your clasp. So, we have our necklace. So here's our final necklace. Um, we have our emphasis down here. It is a different color, a different size, a different shape, and a different texture than the rest of the necklace. Of course it goes with the necklace, but it's definitely the emphasis of the necklace. Thank you so much for watching. You can sign up for my newsletter at the link below the video. I send out newsletters each week and in them I will let you know when I have new videos available. You can learn more about my jewelry design workshop below the video as well. Have a great day.